Hey, what's going on guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, in this video, we'll be discussing about a tactic that I use very often to create hard surface or shapes and things like cars inside of Blender, just like the one you can see behind me. Now, in this video, we'll be also discussing about some bonus tips along the way that how I created the environment around the car and things like that. We'll also be discussing about some tips of photorealism as you can see in this scene. So without further ado, let's get right into the Blender window. Now coming back to the Blender window, let's talk about that how I went about creating this whole scene behind me and this car as well. Now and the, what was the tactic that, that I was talking about? Basically this tactic, tactic is essential if you want to create cars. Without it you cannot match the perfect dimensions and make a perfect car. So basically in this tactic, uh, what I do is go over to a website which I'll give a link down in the description. They have many blueprints and basically what I do is take four blueprints, one for the top, one for the back, uh, one for the front and one for the side. So basically we, have, we will have four total blueprints for the car. Now once you have these blueprints, what we'll do is start placing them around the scene, uh, in, in, in our blender scene. For example, of course, you'll place the side on the side, top on the top, front on the front, and back on the back, as you would have expected. So now, what we'll do is, once you have all, the, uh, all of these placed, what we'll do is, for the front and the back, we will basically go to the uh, um, uh, references section or the image section, uh, properties tab, I think that's what it's called, but it's something like that. Basically in that tab what we'll do is change it from perspective to orthographic for all of the reference images but for the uh, but uh, for the front and the back what we'll do is uh, turn down uh, uh, basically change the default uh, change the first option to default leave it like default if, if, if it was then leave the second option to back, uh, front so it will uh, so both of the references will only be shown from the front and the back respectively so they don't like start clipping and stuff like that. Now for all of the reference images, what we'll do is turn down the opacity to 0.7 so we can see things properly. And, uh, and, the, and the next thing we'll do is change the perspective or if you don't, if you don't want to change it, then you can just turn it off if it wasn't already. Then just turn off the per perspective option. So they are only visible in your orthographic view so you can get the perfect measurements out of your uh, blueprints. Now once we have these things covered, basically that's how I go about uh, creating the car. For the tires, it basically it is basically the same story. I just think that we take the blueprints and just start modeling using basic modeling uh, tools like extruding, insecting, and things like that. You can also use proportional lighting to help you out along the way. Next up, for example, if this isn't really that simple as you would expect it because in modeling you can face many types of issues from shading to artifacts and things like that to overcome that make sure that your model is mostly uh, quartz if you have some tries or n-gons and they don't cause any issues for example they don't cause, uh, cause any artifacts or shading issues then they are perfectly fine but for the most part quartz are the best case scenario so basically make sure to use quartz and if you just don't know that how to convert a try to quad, then this can be very easy to do by using the knife tool. Using the knife tool, you can basically cut out, a, uh, cut out and make edges through the, uh, or they add multiple edges and vertices where the uh, loop cuts cannot pass, for example, triangles and angles. So that's how you can make uh, everything uh, quad, at least for the most part. Now for the headlights, as you can see, they look pretty realistic. Now the secret is just, I, I just use the basic texture that I search up. Basically in the Google, I search up uh, backlight back technique. I just basically took a screenshot or just saved the image. And you can just crop it out or you can wrap it from uh, project from you. So you can get and try to match the angle in the image perfectly as close to the, as close to the, uh, in your scene as possible. So you can get the best result. And then just click on project from you. And then you will have your perfectly projected rear, uh, rear light or backlight. Now, I think that is pretty much it for the car. Talking about the materials, I have I've shown all of the screenshots uh, on the video as you can see here. I will not be explaining them as this, this, these aren't really that complicated and uh, they are really simple. 
so uh, yeah guys so this is pretty much for, for all for the car and now for the road let's talk about the road basically what i did for the road is i just took a basic uh, PBR texture from the internet and just put it on the road texture and then I cranked up the bump value so that it could look very bumpy and the stones could look like very uh, rough to get uh, extra realism next uh, in this uh, uh, I added in a RGB curve so I can edit the roughness that came pre-packaged with this PBR texture and then finally as you can see here the blue part of the water I personally created it I will also give a screenshot of it that how I created it and uh, I don't really think so that there's a need to explain it. So that is pretty much for the road and for the footpath it is just a basic simple PBR texture nothing too fancy going on and it is same for the uh, as you can uh, the rings around the trees you could say now and the trees themselves I just the, I created them using a, a using an add-on called sapling tree gen. This is a really cool add-on and I really recommend you to get it. Basically using this add-on you can create many different types of customized trees. You can create your own trees as well and just not of the presets. So make sure to check it out as this is a pretty helpful feature. Next up you have the mountain. Basically mountain was a pretty difficult part to do for at least for my PC as for the mountain it was very detailed as uh, I, I had to ma add many more subdivisions to get the best results. Basically what I did was I created them using an add-on called ANT Landscapes. Basically using this add-on you can create amazing looking uh, landscapes and you don't have to use anything like displacement maps and you don't have to sculpt them yourselves. I use, basically used to sculpt them myself before I even knew about this. So this just literally was a life changer. Now using this I used a preset of the cliff and then uh, I just set the subdivisions to around 200. So not that high and then finally I added in a subdivision surface modifier so it got to like I think 2 million vertices or sorry 2 million triangles which is pretty high and uh, next uh, for the you could say a rocky texture what it is rocky 3D texture not talking about the texture itself but the 3D, 3D texture basically how it was done is using a modifier called displace modifier I've talked about it in my course so make sure to check it out but I'll also be giving a quick overview of how it works. Basically, what it does is takes a 2D texture and then projects it onto a 3D texture. Basically, you have black and white values. The black values get extruded and the white values is, is the, uh, remain the st uh, same. So basically, you will get some really cool and really nice looking rock results rock inside of Blender. Now for the rock, te uh, rock texture itself, it was a PBR texture, just like always, and uh, it wasn't a custom made texture, like just, uh, unlike the texture. So basically what I did was, I added some things as well in the mountain texture, I basically added some ambient occlusion for more realism and things like that. So uh, these are the things that uh, it took me to create this, these uh, things inside of the scene. I hope you have enjoyed my video and have learned something new. If you have then make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like these and make sure to comment down your suggestions and I'll see you around later. See ya!